The reason why a vehicle starts to look old is uh, the UV rays in the sun. Your paint is oxidizing and it's fading. And this is why five years down the line, you realize that it's not the same anymore. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. You're cleaning your car, spraying perfumes in it, putting those perfume things on your center rear view mirror, and you're wondering where the smell's coming from. It's coming from under your seats. It's coming from where your feet rest. Oil, dust, debris accumulates in certain parts of the car. With moisture mixed into, the, into this whole scenario, you could develop rust, mold, uh, bacteria, bad smells in your car. We have a range of products for every material that your car is made of. From the, the clear coat on your paint, the chrome trims that you have, the plastics that are used on the outside, like the grills. The way I approach a vehicle and the service and the time that I'm going to take is based on the size of the car. Second would be the materials used on the interior of the car. Is it leather? Is it fabric? What kind of carpeting is on the floor? It's also how in-depth a detailer goes. There are detailers who just breeze over the areas where he knows the client will look and sometimes they leave out areas where they, they know that the clients don't really look, like under the dashboards. So a good detailer would go the extra mile, would go under the seats, would take out the seats, wash the carpets, shampoo the carpets. You have a one-step polish and you have a two-step polish and then multi-step polishing. A lot of people just come to me and say, I want polishing. And I speak to them that, look, there's one step, which means we will give a, a glow to your car. It will shine. Two step means we remove deeper scratches. And I know in my mind while I'm telling them this, they're just going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, look, I just want a shiny car. Give it to me. It is a little challenging sometimes. You need to take out the time before to manage the client's expectations from what he's going to get. And if you can understand what he's looking for and relate to him what you are providing and what the end product will be, there is an understanding. I think that's the way forward. I let my work speak for me. I give it my best and I make recordings while I do that. Why? because I want people to know what happens once they leave their vehicles with me. What am I doing? What are the processes I'm going through? And I think it's also a memory that they can take away with them. When you've spent a lot of money for something and your car looks beautiful, you could share that video with your friends and family. Looking at the car somebody drives and the condition of the car itself tells you a lot about the person himself. In today's world, if you think about it, everybody can buy a nice car. How do you differentiate yourself? who's uh, more enthusiast or who loves it more. And that's where detailing came in. Is your car ready to take on the battle for survival? The daily attack from the elements? The first ever detailing product was a paint polish, which was uh, first invented in 1942. I think Turtle Wax is the grandfather of all detailing companies and uh, the products. They were the first ones to invent a car polish and that was the first time people realized you could polish your paint and make it glow. Cars played a big part. To me, there are a sense of freedom. Detailing was always my hobby and a passion. Something I did when I wanted to get away from the world. Something I did when uh, I just wanted to be with myself. I spent a lot of time detailing the cars that I had for friends, for relatives. It just went from there further and further. The first six months I really struggled to, to have people take me seriously because they thought I was just a car wash guy. Six months later it did catch up and it got better and better and I had more and more clientele. I actually took everything step by step and I bought things as I needed needed them. Different cars require different products, different cars require different polishes, different sized polishes. Same chemicals didn't work on these new cars that I'm doing now. So I had to research more companies, go to different companies, see what products they have, test it on my car. The only thing I ever do to my car is wash it and use the products I'm going to use on your cars on my car first because I can't afford to mess your car up. It takes a lifetime to build your reputation. It takes minutes to destroy it. You have to constantly keep upgrading your knowledge. As the newer cars come out, the paints are getting thinner and thinner. 
and the clear coats are getting harder and harder to polish. You got to know the new industry standards for how thick the paint is, how much can we actually polish before we actually remove the paint. And if you remove the paint, that's trouble. I have a few gurus in, in detailing world uh, from Canada, from America, from all over the world who are the lead detailers who've reached a level of detailing that people look up to them. I watch their tutorials, their product reviews. So in fact, I'm at my work from morning 8, 9 till about night 8, 9. Your brain's always working. I mean, I go to sleep sometimes thinking about the detail I'm going to do the next day, the type of car paint, the, the, the condition it was in, the products I'm using. There's a whole aspect of detailing which is uh, physically draining. I love it, I enjoy it, I'm in my zen when I'm doing it. But at the same time, receiving phone calls from multiple clients while I'm working, maintaining the books, you run out of a product and now you need to run out and get that product, you're losing time. For a guy like me who's working alone without any other exterior help, time is of the essence. I need to be able to finish the work in a timely fashion if I want to be profitable. I think if you're working alone and you're working with your hands, you're not really a business owner, you're still a worker. You're just enslaved to yourself now.